Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video of Mida short video series. This is Mihir Jain. I am structural engineer at Mida Soft and in this video we will be talking about rail structure interaction in railway bridges. So to start with we will first understand the definition of continuous welded rail. So generally the standard length of rails were 25 meter before but nowadays we are having continuous welded rails and the length of these rails are more than 200 meter. Now there should be a question arising that why is the necessity of this continuous welded rail like why we have introduced these kind of rails. So the reason is to reduce impact forces in the rails and increase the lifespan of the rails and improves the ride quality. And it also decreases noise and vibration by reducing force which causes the harms to the ambient environment. So if you see this image like earlier we were having a lot of joint connections like this and wherever a uh, train is going or passing above this joint it will induce some vibration and some noise. So to reduce this effect we were having this continuous welded rail. Now since we are having longer rails now so there are some checkpoints that we need to ensure. The very first is when temperature rises track deformation occurs and it can also cause buckling of rail. So earlier if my length of rail is less say 25 meter and there are some expansion joints provided at interval of 25 meter there will not be too much stress accumulation for my rails but when we are having longer rails say of 200 meter and more than that then the accumulation of stresses due to temperature variation is more and this can lead to buckling of rail and this will also have a lot of chances for different accidents of the trains. Another thing is when temperature drops a fracture failure can also occur. So that is the reason like we have to consider rail structure interaction if we are opting for continuous welded rails. Moving on understanding different types of floats that comes on to bridge or I would say a railway bridge. So the very first is the traction braking loads. So suppose we are having this bridge deck and we are having rails above that the track and the train is moving above this rails. Now when the train applies any brake so the rails will try to move along the direction of train and this will also induce some stresses on the deck and the girders. So that is why we need to ensure this loading as well. Then the temperature loading we already discussed like where there is a deformations due to delta t that is the temperature variation so we need to account for what are the stresses that are coming and what are the permissible deformations for that. Similarly for the vertical loads we need to ensure like what is the deformation that is coming here and whether this is under limit. So whenever we are having different kinds of joints and rails it is important to satisfy the different deformation criteria like the deformation on the rails and the bridges are not exceeding the limiting value. So that is another reason we have to consider these load cases. Talking about the analysis procedure or the load combinations that are to be taken. So as I mentioned like there can be three types of load. The first is the thermal load, the second traction braking load and the third is the train vertical load. So one of the thing is we can just compute all these three in a single model or we can induce these loads independently in the model and add them superimposedly. So I will be discussing about this procedure. Another thing is what is the case when these procedures are not required or the requirements are not satisfied. So we have been discussing about these load cases and how the criteria is to be satisfied. But what happens if the stresses or the deformations are not satisfied here? So the limits to the exit force and displacement of a continuous welded rail if are exceeded then there are different countermeasures provided. Talking about the bridge layout we can change the support layout like some supports might be fixed some might be simply supported so we can just change the support layout for the bridge and see the behavior of the bridge accordingly. The second is the span composition. So in case I'm having 300 feet long span bridge and we are having three spans like say of 100 feet each. So we can just vary, create the variation on the spacing of these spans and see the effects. 
then the third is changing the stiffness of deck after that like based upon track countermeasures we can use zero longitudinal resistance rail fasteners but these impact the cost as well of the bridge and then again we are having rail expansion joints that we can provide at the location so generally we first try to countermeasure by these three things if it is not still satisfying then we opt for rail fastener and longitudinal resistance length fasteners so here you see the flow chart like first we check the axial force and displacement in the rails if it is not satisfied then modify the support placement then span composition stiffness of deck still if not satisfied then we give the zero longitudinal resistance rail fastener still if it is not satisfied then we give a rail expansion joint since these are like cost sensitive that is why we provide them at the last when these things are satisfied then we submit the report and then the construction of rail expansion joint is started Here just to give you an idea of modeling like how we will model the rails and the bridges so rail and bridge will be modeled with beam elements and ballast or pad will be given nonlinear spring elements with the defined stiffness and we can give element length around 1 to 2 meter that is close to 3 to 6 feet in the model then talking about the analysis methods so there are two computation analysis methods available and accuracy depends on which analysis thing we are using in the separate analysis thermal loading tra traction braking and train vertical loads are separately considered as I mentioned before and in the complete analysis these loads are concurrently applied in a bridge now depending on the global structure the separate analysis is more likely to produce the greater axial force than the staged analysis which is complete analysis so basically here we are implying that the separate analysis will give you more conservative results and people generally use that for the analysis the reason for which is shown here the ballast is the having stiffness which is of non-linear characteristic because if you understand the ballast when it is loaded it will have more stiffness as compared to the case when it is not loaded so say for non-loaded case it is having stiffness of 25 newton per mm while for the loaded it is having 50 newton per mm now if you see here like when it is unloaded and we have given the thermal load alone so this much stiffness will be already used and when we apply the further loads to the other model in the loaded condition so it will take again the stiffness of 50 newton per mm so that is how the total value will be 75 here since the stiffness is more so the stresses generated will be more and it will lead to conservative results while in the complete analysis it will only take total of 50 newton mm as the stiffness and accordingly the results will be more accurate but it will be less conservative as compared to this now we will move towards the demonstration where we will see how the MIDAS civil will handle rail structure interaction in the program so this is the MIDAS civil window we already have some material and sections defined for the rail now for the rail structure interaction Mida will offers this wizard that is rail track analysis model we just click on this option and there are different tabs that you can see layout section boundary load and wizard option so we just have to give input to each I'll just open the wizard file and here you can see the bridge material that I'm having then the deck information I'm having three span of 100 feet then the embankment length then I choose the span type whether it is simply supported or there is continuous support as well we choose the material for rail and number of tracks then we give the section so I have given the bridge section like if you see the section that I provided it is a PSC box section one cell that is the rail section that we are having UIC60 you can always give some user defined sections from here or you can create any new I section from the geometry then I will define the position of these lanes so I'm having two track lane from the center of the bridge and we just give distances on either side so basically there are 
two track lanes and if you see there are four rails here then comes the boundary so as I mentioned like there will be unloaded condition and the loaded condition to consider the stiffness of ballast and here we just give both the values like unloaded condition and the loaded condition it is generally two times then we give the longitudinal dis limited displacement value here for the ballast bed in case you are having concrete ballast you can also give that like the concrete bed or if there is combination then also you can give it from here then I choose whether I want to model substructure or I want to provide it as a stiffness only so when choosing spring type I will be giving total stiffness of my substructure representing by a spring while for the bearing type I will give the bearing and I will also create the pier cap here and the pier so I'm giving the pier section and the material and the height of my pier I choose the different load so you will see the temperature load first like that is the delta T deck temperature if there is also real temperature you will provide it here then there are two types of loading vertical and the braking so we just provide that for the track 1 and the track 2 now to consider different cases like how the vehicle is moving along the total length that is why I am having increment of loads here for 100 feet here so track 1 it will be in the positive direction of 100 feet while track 2 it is minus 100 and I am choosing number of track locations as 3 then we choose what kind of checks are to be done so I choose all these things and I will click on OK when we click on OK the program will generate the multiple models with different loadings of temperature and static like vertical loads and the braking load so here you can see the loading corresponding to the temperature and here you will find the different load cases that has been generated so I'll just open another one so there will be seven load cases that will be generated like based upon the braking loads temperature loads and the vertical loads once that is created we can just go to this option and click on this rail track analysis report so when I click on this option program will ask me like it will show me all the models so now you can see how many models has been created and then we can give the checking criteria like what are the stresses and the deformations that are to be satisfied so I just give these values and I click on OK so to give you an idea like this is the train braking load being applied so you can see like how it is changing the position for the different tracks now once this is done as I mentioned we just go and click on this option to generate the report and once we click on that the program will give us this kind of report where the first stress and real due to temperature is checked we will see the values and it will also show you like whether the check is satisfied or not this is for braking traction and vertical load the maximum tensile and compressive stress then the maximum deformation that is 0.5 inch that is 0.29 inch hence under the limit then the rotational displacement that is also okay and the vertical displacement so in this way the different checks are performed to check the criteria so in this video we have learned about the rail structure interaction and we have also seen how the program handles that with the help of wizard i hope this video was helpful for you see you in the next thank you